Good evening and welcome to the 1,986 regular meeting of the Livonia City Council. This is a voting meeting. Minutes of this meeting will be approved at the next regular meeting scheduled to be held on Monday, February 28th, 2024. Uh, could we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance led by the Honorable Carrie Budzinski. Thank you, Councilwoman Budzinski. All right, so just a couple things to note. There is one X item that will be uh, presented at the end of the meeting, and there are two public hearings to be held on March 4th, 2024. Madam Clerk, would you please take the roll? Council Member Budzinski? Here. Council Member Morgan? Here. Council Member Jolly? Present. Vice President Tashnik? Here. Council Member Donovic? Here. And President McCullough? Here. And we will note that we are only missing the Honorable Laura Toy, who is out uh, with personal business. Um, at this time, I will entertain a motion for the minutes from the regular meeting of the City Council held on January 29th, 2024. Council? Move to approve. Support. Support from? Support. So I have motion from Jolly, support from Donovic. Any comments from the audience? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, will you please take the vote? Council Member Budzinski? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member Jolly? Aye. Vice President Tashnik? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member, or er, President McCullough? Sorry. Aye, thank you. Vote passes six to zero. Uh, the council has set aside 30 minutes for audience communication for items that are not on the agenda. Do we have any audience communication? Please make your way to the podium. Name and address for the record, and you will get three minutes. Okay. My name is Carla Truxell, uh, 29583 Jacqueline Drive in Livonia, and I'm just here to share positive news. Uh, my husband and I are the founders of SPN Survivors, a nonprofit here in Livonia, all about mental health education. Our mission is to engage and equip communities to strengthen mental health and prevent suicide among teens and young adults in particular. Uh, and that all starts with increasing mental health literacy. And that is a huge focus of what we do. And we have three events this year focusing on three healthy coping skills. One is movement, the other is kindness and gratitude. And this March, we have a Moving with Moose uh, virtual event, inviting everyone to get out there and get moving, uh, tracking your, the distance that you travel, walking, biking, uh, skating, swimming, however you like to move. And this year, we're focusing on teams. We learned last year that people like to get together and do this as a group versus individually. So I'm in going around and asking lots of people to create teams, and I've asked city council and the city uh, city employees to come together and be a team uh, and support what we do with mental health education. And I have flyers here if I... Awesome, yes, thank you. Um, normally, we'll, we would wait till the council, but I'm just gonna jump in and really quick because I think our council team is gonna put something together. Okay. I know, I think Martha was on a different team last year, but we're I gonna pair fine. up. <laughs> Everything you guys do is phenomenal. So anything well, we you. could do to support, please let us know. Mm -hmm. And I know if you guys have events coming up, I'm sure we could save it or share it with the city to, to blast out. But thank you for everything you do for the community. It's, it's impactful and well, appreciated. Sir, did you have something? If you wanna make your way up to the podium, name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Robert Musial. I live at 806 North Renaud, actually in Gross Point Woods. Uh, members of the Bologna City Council, ladies and gentlemen, I came here tonight for two reasons, and they're good. The first is to thank Jim McConnell, the president of the Livonia Historical Society and its hardworking committee. They just got approval for a state of Michigan historic marker for the former site of Bentley High School at Five Mile and Hubbard, as you know. Interestingly <laughs> enough, the very first meeting of the Historical Society was held at Bentley's Library in 1956. 
As you probably know, the dedication ceremony for the marker is planned for September 15th. But why should some, something like this concern someone from a suburb on Detroit's east side? Simple. I grew up in Livonia, and I'm a member of the class of 1966 from Bentley High. Uh, rah, rah. <laughs> Sorry, Franklin's here, you know, what the heck. Um, while getting a state historic marker for Livonia's first public high school is great news, there's one more small thing that could make the ceremony even more special to thousands of grads of Bentley High School. <clears throat> the gift from my class, the class of 66, was to have a small statue cast of a bulldog, the school's mascot which was then displayed in a place of prominence at Bentley. When the school was demolished, that small statue, about the size of a basketball, was put into storage and finally turned up years later at the Greenmead Historical Park. There it's tucked away in the farmhand's house where it might be seen once a week on Sundays. Now when Bentley was torn down and the state-of-the-art Kirksey Recreation Center was created on its grounds. As you know, inside the Kirksey Center is a small room dedicated to the memory of Bentley High. This room contains class photos and other artifacts. So, what I'm asking the council and the Historical Society is to consider bringing the Bulldog home. Home to the very room dedicated to Bentley inside the Kirksey Recreation Center which is where Bentley stood for more than 40 years. I think bringing the Bulldog back to Bentley High, where it can be seen by more people and in its original context, would be a fitting part of the dedication ceremony this September. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, sir. And once we get to uh, council communications, I'm sure my colleagues will definitely have something more to say on it. I just kind of jumped when uh, we we're talking, but we'll get to it for sure. But thank you for bringing that forward. That's okay. Do you need? To, uh, I had to hand write this out because uh, my printer busted just before the meeting. So no, absolutely. I can send you. Perfect. We'll get you some information between the meetings, and please okay. forward it on. But thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any further audience communication? Seeing none. We'll move on to council communication. Council. Mr. President. Councilman Jolly. Thank you very much. Well, per the, per the gentleman's recommendation, I will make a motion to direct our superintendent of parks and recreation to take custody of the bulldog <laughs> and to prominently display it in the bulldog lounge. Thank you. Support. I support. I think uh, it's unanimous. Yeah, it's we'll give it to Ms. Bedzinski on the support. Before, I, do we want to? Yeah, I'll just elaborate. I think it's a great idea. I'm, you know, I'm only sorry that our vice president Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> our old vice president. <laughs> Laura Toy's not here because I, I don't know if you know her well, but she is a proud bulldog and I've heard, uh, we, I've heard her face, yes. we, we, we tease her often uh, and we've joked about renaming that bulldog lounge the Laura Toy Bulldog Lounge. <laughs> um, that's my hope one day, but I don't know if that would be appropriate. Anyways, I think this is a great way to remember the high school being there and just add a little bit of a, a fine touch to the room. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, we, we might have to work out some kind of detail of how to display it specifically. Um, have you been in the room recently? Not, well, months ago, last year sometime. Okay, we're probably gonna have to find the right way to display it. Sure. Um, but I think it's a good idea, thank you. Thank you. Anything else, and do we wanna take a formal vote on that? Probably not, we just can strong arm Ted Davis to make sure we bring the bulldog. It's a motion you, we have to take a vote. Let's do it, so we have a motion. Uh, support from Ms. Bozinski. Anything else from council on this item before we go to the vote? Mr. Morgan? Go to the audience. Anything from the audience? Madam Clerk, would you please take the vote? Council Member Bozinski? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member Jolly? Aye. Vice President Tashnik? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. President McCullough? Aye. And the motion passes at six to zero. So we have a formal motion that will be voted on. Uh, at the next regular meeting. Just no, we just, just, oh, it, it is. So we're good to go. It's a done deal. Now we just, now we just need to apprehend the, the bulldog and bring it over. Thank you. Thank you. Should we include in the motion to have our SWAT team go uh, get it? We could do that. He's pretty small. <laughs>
can I envision Ted going over there and getting <laughs> yeah. parading back with it? It's just kind of like an, like a parade, yes. He's had all his shots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Ms. Morgan, did you have something? Uh, yes, I just wanted to announce the uh, January 2024 uh, City of Livonia retirees, and I want to uh, wish them uh, congratulations and um, well wishes for the future. Uh, first one is Linda Scheel, City Treasurer with 10 years of service. Second one is Carrie Michalek. Um, she was a teller uh, at the Treasurer's Office, 15 years, eight months of service. Deborah Walter, Clerk Typist um, in the Planning Department for 26 years, two months. Carla Sadler, Clerk Typist too at the Parks and Recs with 21 years, eight months of service. And Sharon Mendelson, Senior Clerk in the Inspection Department with 22 years and seven months of service. I'd like to wish them well and uh, Thank you very much for serving the city for all those years, and it's really appreciated. And uh, best wishes to all of them. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Morgan. Uh, Councilwoman Budzinski. Hi, yes. Um, I just wanted to share that I have my next coffee hour this coming Saturday um, at 11 o'clock at the Civic Center Library meeting room. Um, I have two guests um, who are going to be speaking on um, topics that I think will be important to our residents. The first is Matthew Stentz from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, who will talk about cyber safety, um, fraud protection, identity theft awareness, and then youth safety on the internet. Um, following his talk and presentation, um, Brian Kahn from Livonia's uh, Department of Homeland Security will be talking about emergency preparedness um, and how residents can prepare for all sorts of unexpected um, occasions. I uh, wanted to let everyone know that these are family-friendly events. Um, one of the pamphlets that will be handed out is actually an emergency family plan. So if you want to stop by, say hi, we'll have light refreshments, and you can ask questions about what's going on um, at City Council, City Hall as well. Thanks. Mr. President. Councilman Dallin. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so there's a new state initiative, specifically state legislation, that is being pushed by the majority. And it's a city issue, but on a grander scale, it's a state issue. The legislature is trying to push this new $2 fee per month on water bills. So everyone that pays their water bill will be assessed a $2 a month fee. And this fee, essentially, and it's being called water affordability and, and other smart marketing gimmicks but in reality it's a fee on people that pay their water bill and it is supposed to make up the difference for folks that don't pay their water bill so i, I think uh the residents of livonia and that for that matter the state really needs to know about this new bill coming and i know people just say it's just 24 hours a month to make sure people keep their water and i get that i'm sympathetic to people uh that that are going through tough times but with that being said where does it stop it, does it eventually say that we have to start paying two dollars for our DTE building, uh, bills, and, and just where does it stop? And I know I know it can sound kind of funny, right? I mean, paying paying other people's bills, but I, I know that there are a lot of seniors in this community that are on a fixed income, and I know to some, twenty four dollars a year might not seem like a lot, but someone that maybe only makes five hundred bucks a week, if that, it might be difficult for them to to do that. So I think this is something that's going to continue to pick up steam, and I want residents in the city to know about it. And I encourage you to reach out to your state lawmakers and voice your opinion. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Donovic. Vice President? Yes, thank you. Um, so on a happy note, uh, I wanted to have everyone mark their calendars. The 175th Highland Games has set their date. Um, the, it is the oldest festival in North America. Not just the Highland Games, but the oldest festival in North America, really. So, yes. Um, so that will be uh, August 3rd and August 4th. It consistently draws people from across Michigan, other states, Canada. Um, it really becomes a cultural epicenter right here in Livonia. Um, I wanted to give special recognition to Kathy Hasse, also the executive director, for continuing to choose Livonia and making this such a great event. And as a bonus, we always get to appreciate our Livonia Fire Department. They always show up really strong in the tug of war, and it's always exciting to see. And uh, maybe this year you won't have your kilt on backwards. No, right? no, I had the kilt on backwards <laughs> last year, and no one told me until pretty much I was walking out, so that was cool. Yeah, so anyway. And then Mr. Donovic, <clears throat> I think he came last place in the caber toss, too, but that's so. fine. <laughs> Something to build but upon. But consistently a great event, and you know, just mark your calendars right now for that first weekend in August. Yes, thank you. Anything else from council? All right, 
Seeing none, we are gonna move on to reports from the mayor and other city officials. And we do have communication from the Department of Finance dated uh, January 22nd, 2024 for quarterly investment report. This is a receive and file. Moving on, we're gonna move on to the consent agenda. Items one through nine on the consent agenda will be voted on as one item. These items were previously studied at the study meeting that took place on 129 and determined to be non-controversial. Council, do I have a motion? Move to approve. Support. Motion from Jolly, support from Morgan. Any comment? Oh. Comments from Vice President? Yes. Um, I've received a couple uh, comments from people looking at the agenda, and it's a little confusing because agenda item number two looks like we're restoring the funding for the government affairs director. We're actually voting not to approve this, but to put it onto the committee of the whole. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. It doesn't appear the, the way it's worded on the agenda. So just before we vote, that's where we're going with that. Thank you, Vice President. Um, do we have any comments from the audience? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please take the vote for the consent? Council Member Budzinski? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member Jolly? Aye. Vice President Tashnik? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. And President McCullough? Aye. The motion passes six to zero, and we will now move on to unfinished business which we'll move to number 10, which is an administrative response to CR 378-23. It's from the office from the mayor uh, in reference for fees currently being charged by the city and whether they require council approval. Mr. Varga, would you just mind? I, I think it's more of a receive and file. That was the request, yes. Okay, perfect. Good evening, council. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this is a receive and file for the fees. It's in our packet. I appreciate it from the mayor's office. Well, Mr. Mr. President, Councilman Donovic. Thank you, Mr. President. Is it so much we receive and file as, as opposed to whether council actually is going to take any action? It says fees currently being charged by the council and whether they require council approval or not. So. Just point of order, we need a motion to discuss anything. So if it's your intention to offer a motion, you can do so. For discussion? For discussion purposes. I'd like to make a, a motion, uh, approving uh, motion. Do we have support? And take a discussion. Support. Mr. Donovic. Again, I'm just trying to clear up what our, I, I know the intent originally was what council brought this up. There's a lot of fees that are charged by the city. Uh, and if you look at the packet, I mean, there must be hundreds of fees. And thank you to the administration for collecting all those. I think it's important that those are on the public record. Uh, and we are transparent about the fees, whether it be from Parks and Rec or any of the department in the city of Livonia. There are a lot of fees that we charge for various things. So I guess just to clear up, you know, what is our intent here amongst the council, whether it was just a receive and file or if it was some sort of actionable item where we're going to put this in committee and discuss it further, or are we going to make a motion that council has to approve every fee or certain fees, et cetera? Councilman Donovic, I think that we do have this still in committee of the whole. I think it just is more, of, this is more of information for the receive and file. If we want, we can bring it up in another committee of a whole meeting and then have some motions going forward on what we'd like to do, if that appeases you. Because right now I think it's just a ton of pages of information to look through. And we can study it further. If that's amicable, unless you want to make a motion to put it in the committee of a whole um, for the specific fees that we can bring forward. But I think we already have something to that knowledge. I do, yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Mr. Chair. Vice President. Um, I think kind of referring to both of you, I, looks, this looks like it's a receiving file for Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. And when you look in committee of the whole, it still has all the other fees. So maybe that comes up at the next committee of the whole or a future committee of the whole. And we can add it at a future date so to study this. For, in terms of the motion, would the motion be an approving for the receiving file or? For Mr. just parks Mr. and Mr. Rec? President, yes, if I may. Yes. We don't need a motion to receive and file the report. Mm -hmm. um, the underlying matter still is in committee. So there's two separate things. The parks and rec gives us a quarterly report in, the, in regards to any fee action that they've taken. But then this is the separate list that was provided by the administration per the request of council. So this can be used as a point of information and data in that committee. Great, thank you. Well, that was a new one. So with that, we have no further motion other than a receive and file. You would have to call out the motion. Mr. President, yes. I'd like to make a approving for a receive and file. Perfect, and then the support still carries from Mr. Morgan. Thank you. All right. We all learned something new today. Yeah. Even if, 
Oh, yeah, the vote. Yes. We don't have to have a motion. You can just withdraw the motion. Would you like to withdraw the motion? So procedure, we're gonna, I will make a motion to withdraw the motion. Just withdrawing the motion. Okay. And are you good with that, Council Member Morgan? Do you need advice on a council? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we want Mr. Varga up here just to tell it. No, I'm messing around. All right, with that, the motion has been removed. We will move on to item number 11 under unfinished business was an award of contract from the Department of Public Works for the 2024 slash 25 municipal park mowing program which involves approximately 136 acres of park cemeteries, fire station property from budgeted funds. Council? I will offer an approving for... Um, you right. have an approving? Do we have support for discussion? I'll su support for discussion. Mr. President. Councilman Donovic. Can we see if Mr. Uh, Mr. Duck can come up? The floor is yours, Mr. Donovic. Good evening, sir. I know last time there was a bit of discussion on uh, the fact that we were asking to approve essentially two contractors to do the job with one for filling the job, and if that w the first one didn't show up, that the second would, would do it. Are either one of those contractors here this evening? They were asked to be here. Yeah. They're here. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. I guess my question is to whoever the bidder is, whether I'm assuming it's the first one, is are, do they know? I mean, I guess the bit of history to the residents is that We've, we've had lawnmower companies or, or landscaping companies in the past that realized that there was too much work to be done and they just didn't show up and now the hard working folks at DPW had to pick up the slack in the middle of the year, which is difficult. So I guess my question is, is the number one bidder, do they understand the scope of work and the fact that there's a lot of work to be done and they're not gonna walk out in the middle of the year and put all that responsibility on you? Yes to the first part and our hope the second part. I guess it'd be nice maybe get the petitioner to come up and reassure us. Could you guys state your name and yeah. address for the record? Uh, good evening, uh, Council. I'm Stan Brantley, the owner of Brantley Development. And um, to answer your question, yes, we do understand the um, scope of the service that you're requiring. Uh, we brought it up um, in the pre-bid meeting um, because we did recognize that this bid had came about several times in the last several years when it was initially put out as a multi-year contract. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about us, um, Brantley Development. Um, I come from the government side. I was 15 years as a transportation planner for Genesee County Planning Commission. Uh, sat on a number of different boards in Genesee, Lapeer, and Shawasee County. So the administrative part, I have complete um, uh, confidence that we can provide that service. Um, two years ago, we were also asked by the city of Dearborn to take over their uh, mowing of their parks because the previous contractor failed. We were successful with that. Even last year, we also assisted them with their fall cleanups of their smaller parks. Um, we had a five-year contract with the city of Troy to maintain over 150 acres of their retention ponds and over 150 acres of Camp Dearborn. Um, matter of fact, we were still under contract with Dearborn to provide that service uh, for the last five, um, 10 years. We've been under contract with the city of Dearborn and Michigan Department of Transportation. We take care of Woodward Avenue from Detroit Zoo to 14 mile, um, M5, eight mile, and a whole bunch of other boulevards, plus all the boulevards in the city of Dearborn. So we do understand what you're requesting, the type of service, um, and our guys are up to par to take care of that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> My name is Nolan, and this is Russell with Ground Control Property Services um, out of New Boston. Uh, we also understand the scope of work um, that the contract is asking for. Um, same as Brentley Development, we have extensive experience with municipal and, and large property maintenance. Uh, also do work with the City of Dearborn and um, other municipalities, Wayne County Community College District. Uh, so very well versed and staffed up for the, uh, the work. Perfect. Anything else? It's just to some of my colleagues, was it normal for us to approve multiple bidders or vendors under one agenda item? Yes. Yep. It's just the fail safe of in case one of them actually. Yeah. Mr. President. Um, so I think it's not abnormal for us to approve 
secondary bidders. Um, I think the, the question that came to point here was the difference in the amounts. Mm -hmm. And that led us to speculate in regards to potentially somebody who was the low bidder not understanding the exact breadth of the, uh, I'm not even sure who, looking at the two of you and not having my packet, I'm, I'm not sure who is the low bidder. You're the low bidder? Mm -hmm. we, we are. You are? The, <laughs> no, we are. You are, okay. Yeah. yeah, so just because yeah. we've had so many problems we've, like through the last couple of years in regards to this contract actually getting done, so we appreciate you coming out. There was a difference in terms of the price between the first and the second that caused us to raise our eyebrows that potentially you didn't understand the scope of the work and we didn't want to find ourselves in that position again. Yep. If and that makes like sense. So it, help, it helps and thank you for clarifying for us and it's appreciated. Yep. Councilman Jolly, like I said in the pre-bid meeting, I did address that, that I, I recognized that it was, um, it came back to the table several different times and I wondered why and um, you know, no. I can't speak for another contractor on what their services and, and issues were, but we can provide that service. Uh, it's, 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 it's good to hear, all I'll say is, we get the phone calls when it's not done, so you, thank you for coming out. Yep, no problem. Mr. Morgan? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify, uh, you're with Ground Control, correct? Yeah. Correct, yes. Okay, so they're, they're the low bidder, correct? We're, we're the second bidder. Second? Okay. All right, because I'm looking at the I'm looking at the tab here, and that's that's what it's showing on my on my screen here. So, okay. Yeah. And with Brantley. Point of clarification, yes, probably to Mr. Moore, and we're yeah, receiving Mr. something Moore, different in the packet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take a look at that real quick, and let me know, or you can come over here and take a look at this. Or Mr. Mr. President, if you mind. Mr. Donick. On our packet, it says ground control forty nine thousand one hundred and thirty two dollars. Yeah. And our, Brantley, was, it says. Uh, Eighty-seven thousand two hundred and seventy-six dollars. So, yeah, I I can look. I could pull it up, but I believe our total package because there was two separate mm -hmm. parts of the contract, like yeah. the parks mowing, and then there were cemeteries. I think se mm -hmm. separate. I think our total bid was ninety-eight thousand yeah. yeah. and change. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, look. At, if you go down, actually, the, there you go. If you go yeah. down, you're right. So, ground control is ninety-eight thousand two hundred sixty-two, and Brantley is one hundred seventy-four thousand five hundred fifty-two. So there are they're broken up in two different columns per year. Per year, I guess. Uh, I don't. Ours is not that much on it, over a two-year kind. Of, two years. Two year, that probably yeah, is correct. Yeah, Twenty-four yeah. and twenty-five. All right, well, I think we've got the numbers right. Thank you so much for the both the companies coming out today on a Monday night to discuss hopefully what the weather is bringing forward in the next couple months, right? Um, we do anything more from council on this before we go to the vote? I'll just say one last thing. Thank you for doing that, honestly, for coming up and, and being here. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please take the roll or vote? Council Member Budzinski? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member Jolly? Aye. Vice President Tashnik? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. And President McCullough? Aye. The motion uh, passes six to zero, and that actually concludes the regular agenda. I will now go back to the audience for communication that for items that are not currently on the agenda. There's Anything? an X item. There's an X item. I know, so I'm going to that next. Okay. Thank you. Um, we will now move on to X1. Council, do I have a motion to suspend the rules? Motion to suspend. It's a motion from Jolly, support from Donovic. And we can show six. Would you please take the vote? Council Member Budzinski? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member Jolly? Aye. Vice President Tashnik? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. And President McCullough? Aye. Motion passes. Six to zero, and the rules are suspended. We will now move on to item X1, which is a request to amend council resolution 26-24 from the office of the city clerk to reflect the correct salary rate for the appointed deputy clerk position as indicated on the revised wage schedule. Council, do I have at least a motion? Mr. President. Mr. Donovic. I'll offer and approving. Support from, do I have support? I'll give you support. For sake of discussion. Madam Clerk, the floor is yours. Okay, the only reason this item unfortunately had to come back before you is because the wage schedule that I was working from was incorrect. I did not realize that. So when I sent in the information, the schedule had an incorrect amount for the dollar amount for her salary. So that's why it's being revised so that 
payroll and finance will have the correct council resolution reflecting the collect correct annual salary. So that's why it needs to be revised. Thank you. Council? Mr. President. Mr. Donovan. Can you help explain, Madam Clerk, can you help explain or to the law department, I understand the rationale for wanting to give your deputy step increase, I, I can understand that. What is the process for that? Is the, does it need to go before civil service or some sort no. of board to get that approval? No, it does not. It's an appointed position and anyone who is appointed can be brought in at any step on that scale because that scale is already approved by civil service and by council. So it's up to the appointed person who's making the appointee. We can bring them in at any pay within that scale, whatever is approved. And then a follow up for department heads, maybe to Mr. Bernier, that would be different because the department head isn't appointed or are they appointed or they hired? Almost all department heads are appointed by the mayor. And they come in at various pay, pay scales within that. Step one, two, three, four, or five. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Uh, Anything further from council? Uh, Mr. Chair. Vice President. Um, I can see, I see exactly what you're trying to fix. I just, um, when I look at the wage rate, it's not listed there for deputy clerk. It's under appointees pay, pay scale. It's a whole separate pay scale just So it's for not under the deputy clerk? It is. It's at the very clear. bottom. It's not the same enough? It's listed. Thank you. Yeah. It's not the same amount. <laughs> Step three. It's off by about $500. It's off. Are you looking at inside Livonia? Or are you looking oh, at the maybe. scale that Yeah, City service. of Livonia appointees. It says 73,569, and your, it's the note to us says 73,070. I just want to make sure we're correct. Right. Well, they and have that, taken yeah. it down and put it back up a few times, <laughs> so. civil service has. So I don't know which one you're looking at. They did have the wrong one on inside. 2022 to 2025 wage rate schedule, effective 12-1-22. And you're looking at the correct column for the, the year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, yeah, it's neither of those. That's 74, 5, 68. Yep. That is what it says in the this resolution. Is like the water. 74, 5, 68. Step three, middle column. Yep. Okay. Are we all looking at the same? Do you see it now? I just wanted to make sure we're, so we don't have the problem again. Absolutely. <laughs> the law department already asked me to review Okay, the we're good, we're good. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same. With finance and payroll okay. as well. To make Anything sure. else from council? Thank you. Seeing none, anything from the audience? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please take the vote? Sure. Council Member Budzinski? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member Jolly? Aye. Vice President Tashnik? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. President McCullough. Aye. And the X item passes six to zero. And with that, that brings us to the conclusion. Council, do we have any closing remarks for the regular? President McCullough. Uh, Could I just speak on one other item that's not on your agenda? Uh, it's just a plug for voting. Sure, sure, yes. <laughs> okay, as the city clerk, you probably all know we have an upcoming presidential primary on the 27th of February. But I wanted to share some information with all of you about our early voting site. This year, it is being rolled out. It's a constitutional amendment that was adopted November 2022. So it starts with this presidential primary. Livonia will have one site. It will be open for all Livonia voters. So no matter what your precinct number is, you will all vote at one location. It starts this Saturday, which is the 17th. It will open at 9 a.m. It will close at 5 p.m. for nine consecutive days, ending the Sunday before election. It will function just like a precinct, so you will fill out an application. It will show your voter or a driver's license or valid ID. You'll be issued a ballot. You will vote it there in the precinct, and you will feed it into a tabulator. So this gives all of Onia residents 72 extra hours to vote in person if their schedule does not allow them to be in person on election day. So I just wanted to share that with all of you. We are using one site, it's the Housing Commission. So the address is 10800 Farmington Road. It's just south of Plymouth and it's on the east side of the road. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else from council? I'm gonna, I, I went back to you, but seeing none. Anything else from the audience? Seeing none. Council, do I have a motion for adjournment? Move to adjourn. Support. Jen, support from Vice President. Madam Clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Budzinski? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member Jolly? Aye. Vice President Tashnik? Aye. Council Member Donovan? Aye. And President McCullough? Aye. And we will adjourn this meeting at 7.35. We'll see you all back here at 8 o'clock for the study. Thank you, Lavinia.